Welcome to the NCN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stops stories. Development plans for St. Lucia have taken shape with the National Integration Planning and Program Unit. Work on the second phase of the John Compton Dam Rehabilitation Project to begin in June. The Caribbean Network of Francophonie Institutions discuss matters of sustainability. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Government's development plans for St. Lucia have taken shape with the National Integrated Planning and Program Unit, NIP. The NIP, established in September of 2018, is a newly formed unit within the Department of Finance. The unit's key mandate is to establish new evidence-based national infrastructural planning and program paradigm across all relevant government agencies. The unit was officially launched Thursday, 25th April. Here's Anisia Antoine. The unit is also responsible for defining the overarching vision, strategy and roadmap for the development of the national infrastructure agenda by assessing the current and future infrastructural needs of agencies and the overall public service and ensuring that financial and capital resources align with national priorities. According to the Honourable Prime Minister Alan Chastney, the launching of the NIP unit is a milestone for his administration. Upon assuming office in 2016, an area which needed urgent attention was that of infrastructural development. And so what happened was that we, were, we went through two budget processes um, in which we clearly realized that we had a problem. Um, and the problem was is that the, the capacity to determine where we were going. So even within the Ministry of Education, where was the growth of the population going? Where, where were the new schools going to be required? Um, new roads in terms of, of planning, and we, we saw a huge problem in the Ministry of Physical Planning, and that the Ministry of Physical Planning was undertaking two activities. One is a longer term planning and policy process, and then the DCA, which is a regulatory side of it. And they were trying to do it in a, a coexisting in the same, in the same space. The NIP unit's director, Howard Wells, says the unit must undertake key activities, including the collection and categorizing of all existing infrastructure data within one central database to define the overarching vision. Another major activity to be undertaken by the NIP is the review of St. Lucia's National Vision Plan, which was approved in 2008. The vision plan outlined bold new ideas that would have transformed many sectors of St. Lucia, including the total redevelopment of the city of Castries. However, since the approval of the plan, a lot has changed. For instance, there is now increased emphasis on climate change and its impacts on small island developing states like St. Lucia. We've also witnessed the energy revolution and a push towards greater use of renewable energy. A new urban planning paradigm now exists, where greater emphasis is placed on people and the environment. Providing support to the National Integrated Planning and Program Unit will be the United Nations Officer for Project Services, UNOPS, as well as the University of Oxford. Though our collaboration with the Infrastructure Transitions Research Consortium led by Oxford University, UNOPS will support the NIP unit in the development of cutting-edge, innovative, and well-integrated planning tools and modeling techniques that will support evidence-based policy decision-making, taking into account long-term demands on infrastructure as well as climate risk vulnerability of existing infrastructure assets. This information will not only ensure that infrastructure investments are correctly prioritized, sequence and manage, but will enable the attraction of external investments through the development of robust evidence-supported business cases. Therefore, as a consequence of these new tools, and Lucia is leading a dramatic change in public policy design based on technical evidence and sound methodologies. The NIP unit will not replace any existing structure or agency within the government of St. Lucia. Instead, the unit is mandated to network with all departments to provide strong evidence-based assessments necessary for the justification and alignment of infrastructure plans and strategies to the country's national infrastructure priorities. 
Meantime, moves are afoot to reinvigorate the city of Castries. Consultation with stakeholders under the Castries Vision 2030 strategy have concluded. The initial goal of the Castries Vision 2030 was to review the 2008 National Vision Plan for Castries District in a collaborative effort shared by the Government of St. Lucia through the National Integrated Planning and Program Unit NIP, the United Nations Office for Project Services UNOPS, with support from the Office of the Mayor of Castries. Initial consultations for the Castries Vision 2030 began in 2018, and on Thursday, April 25th, the official Castries Vision 2030 report was handed over by the UNOPS multi-country manager to Prime Minister Alan Shastny. From the inception of this project, it was agreed to review the National Vision Plan of 2008 through the lens of a new body of science with regard to urban development and planning, expressed by the SDGs, in particular SDG number 11, the New Urban Agenda, and the International Guidelines on Urban and Territorial Planning. Blending all these guidelines into one clear statement for Castries resulted in a the theme, making St. Lucia's capital a vibrant, resilient, and smart heritage city for its residents and visitors. In summary, the Castries Vision 2030 report is structured in seven chapters for public outreach in an easy-to-read document. Among the key highlights are 10 transformational projects out of a pre-selection of nearly 100 proposed interventions. A key component of the city regional vision and desired spatial structure is the road infrastructure. The vision proposed to establish a new road hierarchy with highways outside of the city region, urban avenues inside the city region, and a north-south link corridor to bypass Castry city region. A network of park and rides is proposed at Shock, cul-de-sac, as well as around the inner city. The inner city and adjacent parts of the core city should be declared low emission zones with strict parking regulations. A complementary key component in the sustainable redevelopment of Castries City Region is the establishment of a new public transport system that will include a combination of large, medium-sized and minibuses, as well as local ferries and water taxis to maximize the use of uncongested waters in and around Castries. Area-based development for Castries prioritizes seven focus areas. Despite this focus, it needs to be stressed that all areas matter in the implementation of the Castries Vision 2030. The downtown Castries focus area comprises several proposed strategic interventions aimed at creating a livable and walkable, vibrant downtown with day and nightlife culture and wayfinding. Interventions include creating bus terminuses, park and ride facilities at strategic locations, redeveloping the central market area, creating a central green and car-free esplanade with organized vending. But in order for the Castries Vision 2030 to materialize, a roadmap for implementation must be adopted and adhered to, which include national and local leadership, evidence-based planning, and monitoring and planning system review and reform. Once endorsed by Cabinet, the Castries Vision 2013 would override the 2008 National Vision Plan for Castries. Work on the second phase of the John Compton Dam rehabilitation project, which involves the dredging of the reservoir and transport of sediment, is set to begin in June 2019. The announcement was made by Wasco's representatives, as well as the contractor who met recently with residents of Tetshime Millet, Vanad, Jackmill and Environs during a town hall-style meeting. Project Manager for the John Compton Dam Rehabilitation Project Phase 2, David Ferrajo, of Vinci Construction Maritime A Fluvial, disclosed that the suction dredge, which will be used to desilt the John Compton Dam, is already en route to St. Lucia from Europe and is expected to arrive at Podcast Trees by April 30, 2019. Once the equipment arrives on island, a total of 14 trailer trucks will be used over a five-day period to transport the heavy dredging equipment from podcast trees to the John Compton Dam. Assembling of the marine equipment will then take place. Specialized experts, including three divers, have been contracted to conduct the underwater works. The crew will be responsible for the removal of woody debris from the reservoir, among other responsibilities. Permanent onshore pipelines will also be laid from the reservoir to the sediment disposal area in preparation for the suction dredging. Meanwhile, head of the project management unit of Wasco, Gordon Wyke, presented a status report on phase one of the project, construction of the sediment disposal area. 
The works are being undertaken by Mega Contracting Inc., a local construction company. Phase 1 began in May 2018, but the works have been hindered due to the heavy rains specifically during the last quarter of 2018. Once completed, the SDA will be used to dispose of the sediment from the reservoir when the dredging phase begins in June. Therefore, preparations are well advanced for the commencement of Phase 2 of the project. Hence, Wasco is requesting the cooperation of all residents and commuters in the area to ensure that the traffic management plan is implemented to cause minimum inconvenience. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. The problem starts with finding a suitable spot. It extends to double parking. Offloading zones are ignored, thus inconveniencing commercial activity. Handicapped spots are occupied by drivers who use the quick errand excuse. And of course, there's the constant fear of parking tickets. In an effort to curb these and other parking-related issues, the Castries City Council will be implementing short-term paid parking. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome to your update focusing on youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. An important aspect of the staging of the National Youth Awards is to give young citizens the opportunity to have their contributions to the development of the society highlighted in a very meaningful way. That's the view of the Director of Youth, Mary Wilfred. Ms. Wilfred made the observation during a press briefing ahead of the National Youth Awards due to be held on Saturday evening. And one of the things about the Youth um, Awards is to actually, you know, pluck out young people who, who are doing great things in their community, but they are unknown. We, we, we don't know them, like it's been brought to the surface um, during Youth Awards. So we see um, young people engage in small businesses, having impact on the community. We see young people taking their own resources to do things in, in, uh, in their community as well. We see, young, we see students involved in their council and doing good things at school, teacher appreciation day, doing things for their school, cleaning up their school and trying to give their school a good image. Ms. Wilfred singled out the nominees vying for the prestigious Youth of the Year Award. We have um, Kathleen Carew, Anita Felix, Krishna St. Bryce, Junior Delis, and Sue Ann Shalry. These are our shortlisted nominees for um, Youth of the Year 2018. Youth Awards will be held Saturday, April 27, 2019 at the Financial Administrative Center starting at 7 p.m. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, says the government of St. Lucia intends to tap into the limitless talent of St. Lucian youth and to be proactive in providing them with the opportunities needed to realize their potential. Minister Estefan expressed these views during his contribution to the debate in Parliament on the Appropriations Bill 2019-2020. It is through this allocation or these allocations of providing vital resources, focused commitment, support, and by creating and providing new opportunities that many of the economic and social challenges which hinder the ability of our youth to contribute to our economic growth and development can be tackled in a sustainable way. The Youth Development and Sports Minister said the approach will be a focus on interventions that will empower young people. We do so with the full intention to have them tap into the new opportunities that we are creating as we pursue our national goal of inclusive growth. We recognize, Mr. Speaker, 
that we are created equal in this world, but we do not have the very same talents and giftings. Physical education teachers in St. Lucia have been advised to remember that physical activity is essential regarding content and the medium through which it is delivered. The sentiment was expressed by the director and co-founder of the Caribbean Sport and Development Agency, Mark Munger, who was the guest speaker at the recently concluded physical education and sports conference held here. So the content of physical activity is important for us as PE teachers, that we have a, responsible, a responsibility to ensure that our students are engaged in physical activity, just as content, doesn't matter what. And that idea of daily, that recommended 60 minutes or whatever it is you agree on, of physical activity. But also physical activity as the medium, and we know that already, right? So I don't want to be preaching to the choir here, but the idea that this powerful medium of moving is the medium that we use to educate ourselves in, about, and through physical education. Mr. Mangal also cautioned that physical education teachers should not overlook the fundamentals of physical activity. So let's not divorce the fundamental motor skills that we do as prerequisite for sports skills. So when we do throwing and catching, we're not doing throwing and catching for throwing and catching sake. It's linked to something else. It's linked to the sports that we use throwing and catching for, whether it's the javelin or the cricket ball or the net ball. And so we're developing those throwing and catching skills as fundamental skills, the running, jumping, hopping, skipping skills, both in terms of developing, yes, their physical literacy, but also leading to providing them with the foundation for quality sport performance, meaningful quality sport experiences. This year's Physical Education and Sports Conference was the second of its kind. And that's a wrap on your segment, looking at youth development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The annual meeting of the Caribbean Network of Francophonie Institutions was held this week at the Auberge Seraphine Hotel Conference Room. The meeting provided an opportunity for discussions on matters of mutual interest and cooperation. Chief among them was the use of available avenues by St. Lucians and other Francophonie nations for development at the national and personal level. Marcia Symphorian is the Secretary General of the National Commission for UNESCO. The language barrier as it relates to the, the language of communication, which is French, hinders us in terms of being able to fully access, not just access funding and resources, but also engaging fully with the work of the organization in terms of participating at the high level meetings and ensuring that we get the things that we, that we require for our own um, development in, in, in St. Lucia. So it's one of the things that we're going to be looking at and discussing in terms of perhaps ensuring a, a, a more open organization that's a little more embracing of multilinguistic, you know, the multilinguistic realities of the member states, you know, and that perhaps you can consider um, being able to participate using our Creole, for example. Um, it, it's, it's a discussion that has to be had. Um, St. Lucia is not the only uh, member state affect affected. Dominica as well is in a similar situation. The issue of language, the Secretary General says, is not unique to St. Lucia and warrants a holistic approach. Access to higher level education at, through um, French speaking institutions. Um, increasingly, we're seeing that that is a, a, a very possible thing, not just in the, in the region but beyond. In, in, um, in Canada, for example, through the Francophonie um, Scholarship Program. So it is important that we, en we encourage students to do the language, to learn the language, and to get certified in the language. The Ministry of Education has started a program, a pilot program, where they're encouraging students at the secondary school level to do their French certification, because you require certification to be able to attend those French institutions. And the, the advantage being that those French institutions, the um, tuition fees are null or, or very minimal. So it's, it's, it's a plus for students to consider going to those institutions to, 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 um, to pursue higher education. So we, we, the, the issue of certification is key, and we hope that the ministry is going to continue with expanding the pilot project so, so that students can start to get certified, even at the primary school level. And that was the Secretary General of the National Commission for UNESCO, Marcia Symphorium. 
And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Crayon. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, long-term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home-based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop, as a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Cuyon. Merci autant, Nisher. Monsieur, Madame, département qui n'est responsabilité pour information au gouvernement de celle-ci, ça c'est GIS, ça c'est depuis Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, qu'a posé au Nouvelle Acquéol, posé au Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement japonais y a une initiative pour implémenter un programme qui a été en qui meilleure façon pour le développement fait à PIA. Des voyants cérémonies en sorte financière, jeudi, le 25 avril, Plusieurs Grecs et leurs grands officiels, ni hors cette ici, et leurs pays, te présentent ensemble et puis Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasné pour expliquer quoi initiative ça là. Divers officiers en affaires développement et finances adressés ce matin en parmi eux c'était le représentatif de l'université Oxford qui a assisté cette ici et puis pour comme ça là, Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasné posé en pile force à sous raison ville castrui et pays a généralement ni brisé ni un fait déjà nouveau et fait référence pour ces établissements CDC qui étaient bâtis depuis en mi-temps c'est l'année 1940 là pour aider les habitants pour en cet temps seulement mais nous en l'année 2019 et qui a existé toujours on nous a pour le ministre l'a noté le ministre Chasse a déclaré que l'âge arrivé pour pays a ni un fait déjà en ben image neuf pour changer pour trouver cette ici et pour bâtir ville là c'est pour Faire l'environnement plus acceptable, la place, trafic, business, transportation, en parmi plusieurs autres aspects de développement. En parlant de ça, le directeur pour OG Sala, pour planer et développer un programme nouveau Sala pour Castri, en particulier M. Howard Wells, présente une meilleure explication du programme. Là. Il dit qu'avant que nous avons bâti le projet Vaiti Vai, mais après le gouvernement a pris des marches pour contrôler ça. Mais le gouvernement à présent ni plan ça là pour faire un plan général côté qui monde qui veut faire projet à présent qui ni jid qui savent comment le projet à ça fait qui côté y a ça investi et puis qui problème avant y a acheté un propriétaire par exemple qui problème y a payé avant investissement ça ça fait. Monsieur Wells a annoncé aussi y a annoncé plus important développement en bas pour ça là, c'est pour mettre Ville Castri en neuf. Quand le Premier ministre l'a dit en, en l'adresse, Castri, quand en ville, ni un chai problème. Castri, ni compétition, from Rodney um, B. Mais toujours, Castri, ni un problème qui est plus grand. Les gens qui ont quitté Ville Castri, en mettant Ville Castri, et qui ont allé vivre en côté, l'autre côté. Et ça, ka, ça a affecté um, la vie en site en, en site là. Um, Castri l'a passé cinq heures. Il n'a pas eu activité, il n'a pas eu chaque café. Et ça a encouragé l'autre bagaille. Um, nous tous savons qui s'est passé ça. Est. Mais l'autre problème en site là. Action c'est pour garder comment il y a ça ni vivre. Ni, este, um, ni la vie encore. Quand plus fort piloté pour profiter économique cette ci le développement a fait touristique qui a trouvé grande attention. Pour raison ça là, un pile de marche a fait pour augmenter qui quantité de touristes qui a visité et qui quantité d'argent qui a dépensé en pays. 
plan gouvernement, c'est pour augmenter les mots touristes qui ont visité pour vacances, sorti 386 000 en l'année 2017 pour 541 000 pour l'année 2022. Selon le Premier ministre Honorable Alan Chastney, en présentation budget, le programme touristique a apporté un bon appel pour les étrangers qui ont visité de diverses façons, par exemple, tu veux qu'il trouve une présentation en différentes manières pour encourager ou pour dépenser l'argent en PIA. Ça, c'est le résultat de ces produits qui PIA a produit. Alors, l'industrie touristique là, a embrassé des produits nouveaux qui a agrandi les services pour les gens qui ont visité celle-ci. En parmi ces développements nouveaux de l'affaire touristique, c'est le développement de la place Castri pour établir plus belle thé en ville là. Le Premier ministre a déclaré que le projet a transformé l'expérience des touristes en manière à acheter avec ces produits qui ont à son exhibition pour acheter. On a le Premier ministre a remarqué aussi que, comme la place des affaires touristiques là, est ici, a agrandi, le gouvernement a identifié les produits des affaires touristiques en ville Castri comme un qui est très important pour faire la ville plus appréciable et intéressante pour les étrangers qui ont visité et aussi le peuple de ici même. Selon le Premier ministre Chastney, le plan qui a embrassé plusieurs projets comme le boulevard, le jardin flair, la meilleure place pour les marcher, faire ville castrée plus confortable pour les visiter n'importe les gens, si sans ni pérez des affaires crimes. Le plan de développement nouveau touristique a aussi embrassé plusieurs communes comme cela et Sofouye. Le gouvernement, si l'on peut mettre cela, ni espoir, ça a une école secteur touriste pour porter au ils ont pris 9 millions de dollars pour l'année 2022 et qui ont aussi encouragé l'investissement en hauteur de 3,5 millions de dollars en même l'année ça là Et qui ont aussi l'occasion en haut de 4 000 travail en cette lesse. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour garder et je vous une invitation. Pour je ne peux pas encore, si vous concevez la vie, vous avez présenté une nouvelle là. À présent, nous avons pour Nisha. Merci au Pil Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are partly cloudy, becoming cloudy at times with widely scattered showers. A trough system over the eastern Caribbean will continue to cause cloudiness and some scattered showers mainly over the central and southern islands during the next 24 hours. Tides for Castries Harbour was low at 2.56 p.m. and will be high again at 9.42 p.m. The tides for V4 Bay was low at 4.23 p.m. and will be high again at 10.49 p.m. The seas slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.44 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.